Okay, Mitch. Here. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Whatever YouTube people say. Give me more. Give me. Give me more energy. Nope. I don't have that. Say okay. smash. Smash that like button. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, I just push record. Shit. Quit being a baby. You like that when I say that to you? Whoa. No, you know what, Fred? I don't. It hurts my feelings. It's a very ugly <coughs> thing to say. It's not kind. It's not very hard to hurt your feelings. You're a sensitive guy, and I appreciate that. Thank you for being such a sensitive pussy. Sensitive guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> I hear the flag wrestling. Feels good, huh? What? Feels good. What? To, to hear, hear the it? flag. It feels good to hear? I guess it does. Sometimes. You don't hear, or you don't feel sounds, Fred. You do if you're deaf. Sound is just vibration. You See? literally feel sound. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> I found out that they, because I've been looking at radios and different microphones and stuff that you can use mm -hmm. for the more tactical applications. Okay. And they have, they have a set that you can get that they don't actually go in your ears. They go... Oh, they go like in front of your ear and up and around, mm -hmm. kind of. It uses bone conduction. Yeah, a buddy of mine has a headphones that he uses at work, and he his ears are free, but it's on his cheekbone right here. Yeah. And it, and it vibrates into his cheekbone, and that's how he hears. I thought that was the weirdest thing. I was like so impressed by it. Yeah, I, I was like, wow. Well, I know that we use the bones in our ears to, you know, turn the different wavelengths and smallest bone and in the body is called the trigger it's in the air <laughs> trigger see it's like a gun Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i did not know that but yeah i thought that was really really impressive i was like wow i had no idea that's genius <laughs> so there's this thing called the fast Fourier transfer the it fast and the fury fast f fast fuel uh, the guy that taught Two me about fires. it had an accent, so I don't know if the word has an accent or <laughs> if <laughs> fast Fourier transfer. But it's it's an equation that you complete, right? And our brain, our ears do it naturally. And that's just, I, don't, I don't know if they found it from the ear, but basically in computer science, when you have an audio file and the audio file has imperfections in it, mm -hmm. it's a way of, of making a smart guess on what the actual audio would be. And so you can take audio that's poor quality and get a pretty good guess on making it good quality. Really? Yeah, and our ears do that naturally. We don't hear things all the way, and our ears pick up, and, and our brains will, will make so this, this, this assumption. This be what they... Yeah, this is what you're yeah. probably hearing. This is what you're probably hearing. Right. And so it's, it uses... Um, it uses it's really interesting because you, you basically have this, this um, number line, and you usually count on it like this, one, two, three, four, you know? Well, what it does is it uses the uh, imaginary numbers, your I numbers, and so it, it takes, you, you have a number line, and then it's using imaginary numbers to give you a, a Cartesian plane where you, can, where you can actually graph it and say, okay, this is where it was going, and we think that this is the right place where it would match, and, and, then you, and you mathematically map it, and it's like, it's really, really interesting. Hmm. It's fast Fourier transfer, I had to implement it for um, one of my parallel classes that I was doing. I... I... Well, the brain is quite impressive. Depends on it's which one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, like even the people who can barely walk and breathe at the same time. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Obama. Uh, <laughs> um, for for example, you your nose is always in your line of sight. You, it's always in your peripheral, but it's always there, so 
<laughs> so weird. You just so, blew my mind. So your mind just automatically it filters it out. Because it's not what it needs to see. Just look forward Whoa. and acknowledge that you can see your nose. I just and I'll acknowledge that there's something there, that, but I but I still am trying to get my, my mind to actually see it. But I can I, I, you can feel like a black spot. Oh, this is taking a turn. <laughs> there, you, you, there's a blind spot that we have in our eyes around somewhere around here. One of the things I, I learned about the eyes that was super weird to me, I didn't realize this, but our eyes, you think of like, oh, this 4K monitor, right? Or this, oh, this super, super high quality TV or monitor or whatever. And it's like, it needs to be super quality. And our eyes are not that high quality except for in, in the focus points. Where we focus, it's super, super high definition. Mm -hmm. And when we move our focus, our brain remembers the high definition. So we see a picture in high definition. But we're actually, the only thing that we're seeing in high definition is the thing we're currently focusing on. Yeah. And, and our brain just, like, it, it basically fills, everything fill, up. fills the gaps. Yeah. And so it's like... I thought that was super interesting, and it, and it makes it like when you look at something, everything like on a monitor, you, everything has to be high high definition because you're going to look at every point of it at some point. But your eyes only need one small part of it to be high definition at any given point. It depends on where your eyes are looking. Interesting. Yeah, it's like our the 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 basically the way that we the the definition of our eyes, like if you were to put it into like high def versus low def or whatever, is everything's all pixelated all in your, your focal points and then it's just um cursory perceptors on the on the outer sides of that, from what I understand. Which I thought that was really weird. Like I, that that kinda of blew my mind. Eyes are cool. Yeah. Our brains are cool. We see upside down. That's another one that's weird. Let's see. <laughs> It goes in, it flips, and then it flips again. It's weird. Either that or we're all actually upside down. I don't I don't really understand it's science. There's so many interesting things. The the um the way that we can we can literally map out they've mapped out um the brains of worms and they've put them into software and they've made a they've they've hooked up um worms to computers and made the worm move through commands in the computers. Yeah, um, our neurons in our brains are chemical. There, there's a chemical. Uh, this has been a while since I, I was reading up on this, but I was really interested in, in artificial intelligence for a long time, and I've, I've done a lot of study. I've done some implementations on my own and stuff. But our the 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 brains. We we think we understand them so well. But it was interesting. There's this physicist, and I'm not claiming. I, I kind of think the whole um, the whole quantum uh, field is. I think it's bogus. I think that the math is correct and the 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 theory is wrong. But um, I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm not a scientist in this sense. I've I've done a decent bit of reading, but the there's this quantum physicist who. Like everybody, the worry that they have with AI, with, with you know, this um, artificial general intelligence is what they call it. But the worry is our brains are um, chemical in, in nature. The, the way that we think is chemical. There's a chemical reaction that happens. And yeah, there's electrical systems through our, our neural systems and stuff like that. But the, the, the synopsy and the an, uh, anons, I forget the names of them. Anyways, the, the way that it communicates is in a chemical reaction. The... Um, Computers do things on a in a electrical, which is faster. It's much faster. And then, um, and then the the side thing is we our brains we learn from the time we grow, right? A kid w is born, and then they they grow up. Is this interesting? I'm kind of going off. <laughs> Tell me I, if you want me to stop. It's not up to me. Okay, I'm but gonna keep going. This isn't live, so I mean. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I'm not gonna edit it out. Come on. <laughs> It's 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 it, it's yeah. Stuff I made a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> me, me in my room. This is a really good idea. But I agree with everything <laughs> I, I said. said. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, um, the the way that we think about things is we learn from our lifetimes. A computer. One, you'll be able to um, you, a, a neural network that you can make on a computer. You have. Um, very very like we we can we can already make neural networks that have the same number of of um protons no neurons neurons thank you there you go 
<laughs> um, but we but we can we can make we can make a, a comparable um, system uh, to some extent, um, and and the system will be superior to some extent because of the electrical um, transfer. But the problem is the um, basically oh if we if we have two c computers that teach each other instead of having one person that's learning through their life you have two computers working in tandem teach like working off each other constantly stimulating constantly trying to retrain and relearn themselves and and so the the explosion of how fast it'll learn is is supposedly theoretically going to be so great the so so that's why everybody's scared of like the oh AI is going to take over the world and that's why um, Elon Musk is like oh the only way to beat it is to get AI incorporated into our minds and so if you look into his neural link and stuff like that is him surgically implanting computers into our brains is the, that's the end game but um, the the theoretical the um, the physicist that is the quantum physicist he points out something that's very I think valid. And his, his conclusion I disagree with, but his, his point is valid. And he said, <coughs> he said something to the effect of, okay, if you take all the neurons in, in the brain, all of the neurons that we have in our brain, in the system of the, the brain, the, neuro, the, the neural system of the brain, those neurons do not account for the way that we experience rate of detail far too much stimuli um, the way that we can touch the way that we can hear and see and taste and smell our senses the our sense of balance our the, all of these different things that's far more complex than that the structure of the the way that we understand the neural structure of the brain to account for I think that's a valid case his his um, postulate is that af, uh, he thinks that there's another um, ooh that was cool he thinks that there's another network that is a quantum network in the brain as well that's deeper that we just don't we can't see, um, and I think that that's I think that it's spirit, but I, I don't know I, I haven't put too much thought into it, but I suspect it's more something so something uh, I don't know I think quantum's is a is a uh, there's there's too many uh, anomalies to make it make sense. People learning quantum physics, the first thing they teach them is like it doesn't make sense literally like that's that's what they teach him it doesn't make sense and they basically are using the math and going off the math to and then trying to paint the picture from the math and it's like mm, can't really do that there's some weird stuff in quantum like so uh in quantum physics there's there's a thing called entanglement i'm gonna stop here let's go welcome to episode uh is it today 11 12 12 welcome to today's episode episode 12 i think you're right What a what a long and boring way too many. What a long and boring intro. Oh man. Yeah. Let's talk about the brain. I'm a welder. <laughs> not, not not with that boot on. Shut up. <laughs> I don't need people to know. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're actually hiding it behind the. Yeah. yeah I didn't. I am. No, I feel a little bit bad. Yeah, you should. Mm, I'm over it now. My foot's in a boot. <clears throat> Tore my Achilles. <laughs> Some might call it the the weak link. I can't. I wish I. I wanted to say Achilles tendon, but you just said Achilles, and I was like, eh, it doesn't. Yeah, Welcome. You only have one tendon in your. Well, you have two technically. It's called the Achilles. It runs from your heel to your calf. It is the strongest tendon in your body. This I did not know. Tell me more. That's where your body gets um, all the push off strength from your toes that makes sense flat footed for three weeks that makes before I went and saw my doctor <laughs> that makes sense why you have why it's so strong and that's like when you stay on the balls of your feet you that's jump, your Achilles tendon when you that, jump you're using yeah. your Achilles yeah so if I were to wager a guess it would have more to do with like when you do a just a plain vertical jump, mm -hmm. I would suspect that it has more to do with your tendon than it does with your muscle. Really? I would suspect. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But you did play one on TV. I'm barely a welder. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I broke my ankle on my first tour. Uh, ended up walking on it broken for six years. Um, then they fixed it. Did you go roll in the dirt again, huh? 
Yeah. That's my girl. Uh, walked on it broke for six years. Uh, the VA and the Army never figured it out, but they did pay for me to go see whatever doctor I wanted, so that was cool. Found out that it had been broken. There was a piece of bone wandering around in there for six years, tearing the hell out of everything. Got the first surgery done to take the piece of bone out. And the doctor says, yeah, this should buy you a good 25 years before we have to do anything on this again. He says, it'll have to be fused eventually, but... Six months later, I was in getting a fuse because it was worse. And oh, man. It's been good for a few years, but it's just torn up. When I went to the that specialist down in Murray, and um, yeah, he said, <laughs> he says, well. Looking at your x-ray and everything, there's not really anything to do. So I don't know why it's hurting so bad. And I, I'm like, well, it hurts back by my Achilles. So it starts touching up, touching it. <laughs> wow. Oh, does it hurt right there? Yeah. What about over here? No. About a, here? Nope. When I do this? No. What about when I do this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I would say that you've got a tear. Ah, it's good he says, you should, you should stop walking so weird. <laughs> That's what he said to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, basically, I got a leg that's no good. Just like the rest of me. Well, get, get, get held up. <laughs> I would love to. I want to go back to work. I'm bored. <laughs> and harassing poor car wash guy. We've been working on M1As all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked what you did with yours. Yeah, now I'm going to throw a scope and a suppressor on it. So I can sit back and go back to reliving my DMR days in the Army. What's DMR stand for? Designated marksman. Mm. You've done like a little bit of everything in the army, it seems like. Yeah. Done a little bit of everything. Just in everything. It's really weird because I'm not very smart. I'm not particularly good at very much. <laughs> you always sell yourself short, but you, when you apply yourself, you're actually very smart. Don't tell anybody. Oh, life's so much easier when people think you're stupid. It is. This is true. This and is true. And then they tell you all sorts of things that they wouldn't tell you otherwise if they thought that you could understand. You gain a lot of information by letting people think you're dumb. People are just willing to tell you how all the different things they want to, I don't know. It's, it's interesting how we... we we think of things so binary, like, oh, smart or dumb. You think of like, oh, that's a smart person, that's a dumb person, that's a good person, that's a bad person. That's a, uh, they're, 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 we put a binary, like, a binary means either one or the other. It's not, there's me? no middle ground. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what people know, because binary is also the terms that you use in computer science, because it's like you're, that, that you, when you store, you know, zeros and ones, if you go into binary is actually the base one numbers, you know, and so it's like, there's there's stuff that I just I, I get I get confused on what like is normal knowledge sometimes. Depends on who you're talking to. It's so true. But for the people that I talk to on most occasions, it's not good. <laughs> there you go. But what, but what I was getting at, though, is we think of people as like, oh, we, we put them in. Once we find a place to put them in a box in our mind, then you feel like you have them figured out and you, you stop trying to get to know people. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. There's, there's a lot of systems of, of, like, classification for people. And there's value in them because there's, like, there are archetypes that we kind of follow. There are um, different, there's different um, patterns of behavior that we have. And it's like, it's, there, there, there are things that... that are normal and, and it's good to understand that 
but once you start putting people in boxes in your mind, you really stop trying to get to know them as individuals, and you also don't allow them to change, which is the whole purpose of this life, you know? And so it's like, it's, it's a very dangerous pattern to let yourself sink into because it's familiar. Does that make sense? So assuming that all politicians are just in it for themselves is wrong? It might not be wrong, but it's wrong. Do you like what I did there? Yes. Like it might not be incorrect, but it's wrong. <laughs> that might be a better way to say it. Speaking of, did you see old Gary um, came back and said, um, I'm not going to tell you who you can and can't have in your house. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I really... Turns out, I don't have anybody that's going to enforce this. And and so I'm just rescinding it. Instead of admitting that what he did was illegal and that he was wrong, he just says, we can't enforce it, so we're not going to. Yeah, good old... What freaking piece of shit. He's, he's, Gary's not... He doesn't represent me. It's like most of them. He represents himself. Yep. We were talking about this just before we turned on the camera, of how the, um, the two-party system, it, it forces politicians... To, not doesn't force politicians. It enables politicians to not have your best interest in mind. And you shouldn't be appreciative of the two-party system. Well, you shouldn't well, in, like it. Well, look at um, the couple of examples we've had in just like the last week, week and a half, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, they've been throwing down all this talk of lockdowns and how we need to not get together with friends and family to slow the spread, blah, 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 stupid horseshit. Mm -hmm. And then Nancy Pelosi throws this big old party <laughs> for, the, for her and her cronies back. <laughs> back in D.C. Excuse me. And then, you know, they get caught because they're not as smart as they think they are. Because of the internet. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you ever think somebody's not watching you, you're wrong. <laughs> there's there's so much information that we have due to the internet, and it's like people people think of like the the good old the internet the good old days, and like you think of like oh the peace marches and stuff like that, and it's like. Well, if the peach marshes were like the peaceful protests, I wonder really what our history holds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and then I think it was either it was either Como or Newsom in California. I don't remember who it was. They they did basically the same thing. They threw themselves a party and went to it and had all these people there, and they got caught. And then there was the outrage. The battle. Like, well, I guess I better start. I better start. Uh, living what I preach. It's like that's what he said. Yeah, God, more or less. I'm paraphrasing. Prick. I don't remember exactly what he said. It's like, no, dude, you are not a parent. And we are not your children. <laughs> so my daughter always asks me, "Why? You told me that I can't do this, but you did it." Well, I'm gonna, I'm an adult. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm your dad. That's why. <laughs> but yeah, so they sit there and they're like, "Well, we got caught. We better say something." My kids still love the... It was set up. Hey, where's your mask? It was set up. Yo, Nancy, you're not supposed to get set up. Hey, okay. <laughs> That, that <laughs> m song that we showed you. It's so funny. You're not supposed my, to get set up. <laughs> my three-year-old will sing it to me. I'll hear him if I'm in the in other parts in the random room. If you say something similar to set up, like... like uh, Let's get this set up. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you're not supposed to get set up. It's so funny. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sick of their games. Yeah. So sick of their games. And they, you know, they at least used to try to hide it. Mm-hmm. But they don't even try to hide it anymore. And when they get caught, they're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, they're not accountable to it's, anybody it's, or Let's anything. change the subject. It's and if getting, we get people talking about different stuff over the next X number of time, then it's not a problem. It's getting worse and worse and worse. These lockdowns, uh, don't hang out with your family, don't spend time with your friends. It's not about the virus, it's about taking away. It's about control. It, yeah, that's exactly what it's about. Mm -hmm. They have their new, what, whatever they're trying to go for, I suspect a communist state, and 
you know, they, uh, if you have a strong family unit, then communism, socialism and communism is not going to be, be successful. Able, yeah. Because the family is, the family is, the family unit is what God has designed for us to, to raise children in, in righteousness. You know, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. Well, what society has ever survived the, the collapse of the family unit? I think, I think we talked about that <coughs> here last week, a couple weeks ago. I remember you bringing it up, talking about Germany and... Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons... I mean, there were a lot of reasons, but... Oh, yeah, that was last week. Probably. I don't have yeah. it up yet. I'm, I'm sorry again. Why are you apologizing to me? You should apologize to, like, the two people still with us. You guys rocked the party. It's the gayest shit ever. <laughs> 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 yeah I don't like what they're doing just going back to what we were talking about <laughs> um, rules rules for thee but not for me Ooh. and they don't even try to hide it no they don't they are they're in their the stage of just well this is how it is and we are the ruling class and you're just they're trying to convince us that we're a society of serfs and vassals where if that were the case it would not be the way that they think it is in this country and the thing that's interesting and the thing that I'm noticing more and more as I actually start looking more and more is it's not a a problem that's far away from you. It's a local problem, as well. You, you there. It's not just a. It's it, when when people think that they have authority, they naturally abuse it and become become um, tyrannical. Tyrannical. There's there's there is that tendency that that man has to to towards that pride it's 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 a sad thing to see and so I, I was thinking of specifically i was thinking of a case where this um so this farmer and this is back a long time ago i was i was watching a local county politics like they had a video feed of and this is maybe a year or so two ago that i was um, watching this but they had a, a feed of one of their council meetings and in the council meeting, it was brought up how they were trying to get this property rezoned because this family was trying to develop it. The grand, the grandfather owned some like 20 acres or 15 acres. I don't remember. The, maybe it was 50. I don't know. But um, he owned some amount of land. And the, the one city that he was closest to, they ran utilities to his property without telling him. And he didn't want them to run utilities to his... Like, he, he didn't... I, the, the, the dispute sounded like uh, he wasn't mad that they did it. It was mad that they did it without asking him on his land type of a thing. And so the utilities were stubbed there, but they never got hooked up. And he was... His property, because he threw a fit, I guess, his property was actually considered part of the, the other city over's property. Uh, uh, the other city over... Um, he was part of the other city... And, and this one city that he was closer to, they had run utilities to him, but he, had, he, he was part of the other city. Well, one of the big problems is they couldn't annex the, the land and re, realign the, the boundaries of the city be, because the utilities were run there from a different city. And if they annexed it, it would, it, there was some state law that said you can't um, annex a, a, a property for the purpose of changing, um, changing city lines or whatever. And, and so they, there, was, there was this state law that they were quoting that was being misused according to, the, the, according to one of the lawyers. And the people at the county were basically like, well, we can't make a decision on this because any decision we make sets a precedent. And if we just set a precedent, we're going to get sued. 
uh, because if we do it for this person then someone else comes we can't do it for them and so for this potential problem they were like, oh, we can't, we can't solve this problem, basically. And, and the, the family had been trying to get it developed for, for over five years. They were sitting on this property. And they couldn't do anything with it um, because just the, the legal battle. And it's like so much of, so much of that, the problem is people telling other people what to do with their own stuff, you know? It's like, oh... I have this authority now because I'm part of the city or I'm part of the county or I'm, I'm the government. I'm the government. Yeah. And I have to, I have to make sure I do this. And, and, so, and even if the mo even if the motives are, are, are not bad, even the motives are pure, it's still you deciding what other people can do with their own stuff. And that's like, that's like against the whole purpose of, of freedom. It's like the antithesis. The antithesis of, the antithesis. of freedom. Antithesis. I love that word. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Government doesn't solve any problems. They just create. Well, they don't really create them either. They just make them worse. We need to go back to being more self governing. Yeah. One of the things that um, I tell my kids when they have a problem and they're fighting with each other i basically the question i ask them is do you want me to solve the problem and they all know when i solve the problem everybody loses <laughs> like i literally make it so that everybody gets what they don't want yeah. and it's like do you want me to solve the problem because i will and i try and get them i the intent is to help them encourage to encourage them to solve their own problems between themselves and i and i keep an eye on it because that can lead to like oh the big bigger siblings being mean to other siblings and being like, yeah, you just have to deal with it. So I try to keep an eye on that kind of thing. But the idea is don't go to an authority to solve a problem that you can solve yourself. If you have a dispute with your neighbor, instead of going and crying to the police, talk to them. Fight it out. Yeah. Throw fists. I had to, I had to uh, yell at a neighbor because he was he, he was throwing water at her dog, you know, and being mean and cursing at her, kicking the fence and stuff like that. And, and our dog was, she's, she gets behind a fence and she gets fairly aggressive. She gets protective, you know, and I don't mind that. I'm not going to encourage her to not do that because I, I don't mind her being protective of my family. Um, I be careful to make sure I, that she's always, I try to keep her always in a place where she's not going to bite someone or hurt someone or anything like that. And I don't think she would, but, um, it's one of those things where it's like I'm not I, I don't want to, I don't want to to cull her ability to be aggressive. Oh, she never barks at me. I know that's because she's she has a soft heart for the weak. But for the retarded. <laughs> 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 no, it really it really only happens when she's behind a fence or on a chain, like on a on a chain that she's staked to a tree or something, or like tied to a tree or something like that. And that's the only times that I've seen her become aggressive. But um. What I was getting at is, though, we, instead of, instead of, like, throwing her fit or whatever, you know, I went out and I, I, I yelled at him, and I was like, that's, that's not okay, and I told him, basically, like, okay, we, we, ha we live next to each other, and we, we have disagreements and stuff, and we have to work them out. E either we work this out, or we, we have to escalate it to a place that neither of us want. And, and so you get a duel in a cul-de-sac? <laughs> well, I ha everything was translated through... <laughs> and but but the man translators yeah the man he um you he tell him he respected me he respected me for it though because because he's like you, you can see that okay that's a it's when when you're willing to stand up and fight for your family other men respect that and and i since then he's been very pleasant we've been, we've actually become friends and it's it's because we 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 had that conflict and it's like oh we we fear these conflicts we fear this this um hard things and it's like that doesn't need to be that the, you don't need to live that way just just work things out with people because you know most people when you get to know them they're less antagonistic towards you and you're less antagonistic towards them than you would think that's why you don't like to get to know people because you like to yell at people and it's much easier to yell at someone you don't know I Not yell, necessarily easier. I yell at people that I know. How many times have you... You've ever yelled at me? Bullshit. When? When have you yelled at me? This morning. When? 
when you said that I was being chipper? You didn't yell. You cursed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. But you didn't yell. That's true. I don't I don't yell a whole lot. I don't like to yell. I told you. I don't like loud noises. And I work in a really loud shop. <laughs> You listen to really loud music. <laughs> I'm deaf. <laughs> I like guitars. I like angry, growling guitars. And super fast drums. I think that's cool. Do you remember when we were going to start a band? Yeah, and... Ah, shit. And then we were like, oh, yeah. We don't have we any talent. Any talent. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should start a band. Uh, I can't sing. <laughs> can't play an instrument. Let's just stand there. <laughs> it's what we're doing now, though. <laughs> Dude, I'm taking my greatest, my greatest <laughs> talents and attributes, and I'm doing something with it. <laughs> Sitting on my ass, just bitching about everything. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, Look at me. This is the prime. <laughs> it's only downhill from here, Mitch. <laughs> Life will get absolutely no better than this. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, if you've been frustrated by the last few months or the last this last year, 2020, it's it's fine. That just yeah, it could it, be worse. It could be so much worse. You could be Hillary Clinton. You could piss Hillary Clinton off and then decide you could, suicide. You could yourself. get the wrong emails. You could be Mitt Romney. I think I would much oh. rather be Hillary Clinton than Mitt Romney. At least at least she has a spine. Oh man. But I hate Mitt Romney. Yeah. And Nancy. Chuck. I bet if you knew Mitt Romney, you would love him, Mitch. <laughs> No. No, I don't think I would. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he knows the governor-elect. Spencer Coxie? Cox. Cox. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyway, he said, you know, because I was bitching about him. I don't like the guy. He says, you know, you need to meet Barbecue Spencer. Wait. The hell do I want to hang out with him for? He says, just, 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 just listen. <laughs> so, okay, I'm listening. He says, I'm fairly confident that if we took an afternoon and you two actually had a chance to sit and, oh my gosh, you'd still hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Good. He's like, yeah, you'd still hate him. <laughs> you would not like him at all. Uh, He's like, I ought to. Personal or political. <laughs> <laughs> Said, well, I'm not going to like you personally when I don't like you politically. We're polar opposites. <laughs> but you have the audacity to think that you control me. Yeah. As I say to people when they ask where your mask is, I will not be controlled, th or I will not be ruled, thank you very much. That sounds so petulant. I just say, I'm not here to cause trouble. I'll leave if you want me to. I will not be ruled. I guess it doesn't sound petulant when you when you don't when you don't say it that way. It didn't sound petulant. I had I had it was a fun experience the other night though. Like I literally I was laughing with my wife the, the whole time we were in the <laughs> store because because the guy was it a laugh like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man, that's. Just, Okay, mo moving on. But the, 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 um, so the, there was a, he was like the manager guy, and we were going to a Walmart. I heard, and heard the story. Fine, I won't tell it. It was, it was a good story, but these people will never hear it because of your, your, the audacity that you had. Love the audacity. You're word. welcome. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Roxy. Yeah, I'm sorry. For what? I mean, it was a good story. Basically, he asked us to put on a mask. Just I, I the said, whole story. I was just giving you shit. <laughs> he, um, he, he asked us if we had a mask. I said no. And he's like, 
oh, well, here's one. And he goes to give me a mask, one of those single-use ones. And I looked at him. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to wear that. And he was, like, shocked that I would just say that to him directly. I was like, I'm not, like, not going to wear that. And he's like, uh, but, you know, like, the governor and, like, the, the rules and stuff. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I, and I told him, I was like, I'm not here to cause problems. If you want me to leave, I'll go somewhere else. That's fine. And he's like, no, no, you can, you can, you can stay. And I was like, okay, well, then I'm, either I'm going to go or I'm not. But I'm not going to wear that mask. And he's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm supposed to and stuff. And I looked at him and I was like, you know, if anybody asks me, I'll tell him you gave me a really hard time. Is what I told him, and and he was like, he had this, you could, he had the mask on, but I could tell he was like smiling, like okay, at least at least I'm not in trouble, and I just felt bad for the guy. It's like he's he's trying to provide for his family, take care, you know. Yeah. I don't, it's well, not his fault. Well, the thing, what we need to do in those circumstances, and that's generally what I what I try to do if I don't feel like being an ass, which is very rare. But we need to take the opportunity or take advantage of that opportunity when people say well with the with the with the governor's mandates it's law we need to take the time and explain to people that no this is not a law it's a mandate the governor cannot just make law mm -hmm. yeah he can make his mandates and whatever but the governor can't just say okay i'm signing this this is now law you, we can we can fine you the, and put you in jail can, yeah. for it, and it's like no, no, that doesn't it doesn't work that way. And we have three separate, distinct branches of government. We have the judicial, which adjudicates. We have the legislative, that legislates, pass laws, passes laws, uh, makes and, laws, and enforces the laws. And then you have the executive branch, which is a figurehead, executes, both literally and figuratively. In my, Wait, executive is the charge. one who holds up the law, right? What? Is executive that holds up the law? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I said that wrong when I, I interrupted you to give bad information. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up. That's what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> give bad opinions and bad advice. <laughs> yeah. That's why, they, that's why these people are here, really. <laughs> this is prime content. <laughs> we should charge people. <laughs> But <laughs> well, we we should take it's like we should charging take people for being that. your friend. <laughs> Don't want to actually be your friend. <laughs> um, and I I have this conversation with with people on on the internet, <coughs> and they say whatever they are politically. Whatever, yeah, whatever they're saying politically about lockdowns and, and this and that, and I'm like, and. Some people say, oh, there's nothing to worry about. I'm like, so broad executive overreach and abuse of power, executive usurpations are not a threat. And these are the people who supposedly think they're smart. Supposed, supposed free thinkers? Supposed free thinkers. And I always that, love it. And they're man. like, and you sit there and you say, you try to explain to these people that already have their mind made up that that's not the way that things work in in our republic in our in our form of government that's not how things work the executive doesn't just make law the executive doesn't you know that's that's not how our 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 form of government works you have three distinct distinct branches that perform their own jobs stay in your lane people yeah stay in your lane it's it's but, interesting so go ahead anyway um yeah so i'll have this argument with people that are like the government the governor can pass laws i'm like no the governor can't pass laws are we getting ambushed um and i say it's unconstitutional and i say well it's it's not unconstitutional they've passed laws that that grant them emergency powers well that's fine they can pass a law but still, I mean, we go back to Madsen, Madsen versus Marbury, and we go back to the very the words of the founders themselves all throughout, you know, framing our our form of government. Any law that is repugnant to the Constitution is null and void. Is null and void. So, yes, you can make that law, but that law is 
repugnant illegal to the constitution repugnant that's a great way to say that so yeah that law and then every subsequent law of that is illegal it is not a law because it can't be mm-hmm. the constitution is the, the highest law. law of the land yeah and and that's the question is like is the constitution no longer the highest law of the land that's how you ask people like is it so is the constitution no longer the highest law in the land no it still is i uphold the constitution but we well, gotta you you're know, not gotta do what what my what what we gotta do master what, says you just obviously don't care about other people well it's not that i don't care about other people it's that i there, care about myself more there is that you're <laughs> right but that's doesn't mean i'm wrong <laughs> you're right I do care about myself more, as every single person in this world does. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's not try and be holier than thou. And I'm kinder than you. I'm better than you because I care about other people more. And I'm going to put this piece of shit paper over my face to show how much better I am than you. And how dare you. If somebody asks... I was covering up, like, it makes me think of, like, when you're a kid, you, when someone farts, you cover up, you put the, <laughs> your, your shirt on your nose. I was doing that since I was little, so I know how this works. <laughs> don't tell me that masks don't work. <laughs> well, it seems to be there, uh, there's a correlation between mask wearers and infection rates. I'm not going to wear one because I don't want to. And the more that you tell me that I have to, the less I'm going to wear it. If you want to wear a mask, that's cool. That's great. Wear a mask. I'm not going to. Don't insist that I wear one because it makes you feel comfortable. This, this whole thing flies in the face of everything that the Republic stands for. The freedom to choose. But people will also flip that on you. Well, well you refusing to not wear a mask, you, you're, you're hurting other people. You're hurting choice somebody to else's. No, I'm not. Wear a mask. I'll even stay away from you. I was staying away from people before it was the norm. Mm hmm. I mean, I remember pre-pandemic, standing in line at the convenience store to buy your drinks, and somebody would be right on your ass. Like, dude, come on, <laughs> back off. Whenever I had to stand in freaking lines out in, like, normal society, I'm not talking about army lines. <laughs> um... But uh, in normal society, people are just, like, right behind me. And I don't like people behind me, for one. Not to mention when they're almost inside of me, trying to crawl in. Your cologne smells amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, for, I would. I, I would take a step forward. I'll be like, give me... Just give me some space, please. <laughs> Just let give me some space. And then we'd move another step forward, and they'd move two steps forward, and they'd be right back on my ass. I'd be like, please give me some space. I always ask nicely twice. The third time, I'm going to make it very clear how I feel. Dude, just back the hell off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't go over too well at a viewing <laughs> get out of me whoa <laughs> oh I'm sorry I what? I asked you twice <laughs> I asked you twice are you deaf or are you stupid it, it, I'm stupid I don't know what this is this a real story, story? Uh, part of me wants to know and part of me I, doesn't. I don't remember whose viewing it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a forever long line. And so I'm standing there I'm like, God, hell, this sucks. <coughs> and there was this guy, like, trying to get me to give him a piggyback, basically. I'm like, dude, come on, give me some space. 
<laughs> and the rest of it transpired pretty much like I told you. I didn't have to tell him again. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Are you dead? Are you dumb? <laughs> I'm both. I thought I thought you were I thought you were leading up to like a joke, but there's just too much too much truth. That, like there's there's too much that I you can know see. Me it. Too I know you too well. <laughs> like I I don't think that this is a, a, an abstract joke. I think this is like a concrete. This is what happened joke. It's <laughs> oh, great. At first, I thought it was a point of view. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a real story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> My, my friend's a dick. <laughs> it's great that you don't even remember who's viewing. It's like I've been to a lot. A lot of people die, man. A lot well, of statistics show that most people end their life. So, death. <laughs> so one of my, co- my one of my coworkers died earlier this year, and uh, I was going around asking who who was going to the the viewing, and. A couple of guys that I work with, I mean, they're like early 20s, and they're like, I've never been to a viewing or a funeral. Like, have you seriously made it 21 years without... (laughs) Dude, I remember the first one I went to. I was like four years old. I remember going to them when I was little. And I've gone to them so many times since then. What the hell? There's another dog. Roxy. Another dog. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, well, if they fight, we'll not probably not do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> my, my dog will win. She's tough. She doesn't usually fight. There's usually other dogs that I like. She's <laughs> not having it, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's still like a hundred guys between who's running off. God. That's my girl. <laughs> Roxy! She's not listening to you. She's got to chase somebody off. Oh, well. You're welcome for that. Wonderful whistle right in their ears. I hope they're wearing... Headphones. <laughs> ah! so why, does somebody he, why does he keep doing that? Somebody, <laughs> somebody pukes. Because, why would you even say that? Because it's funny to me. <laughs> uh, she's back. Oh. See, she listened. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Until the dog circles around. Oh my gosh, he is! <laughs> is it really? Yes, I just saw him. <laughs> you can't see it because of all the rubble and concrete everywhere. Uh-huh. This is a really cool spot. It really is. Good girl. He's over there. <laughs> Man, you've been rolling in it. Oh, do we... Do you want to go ahead, the Constitution today? You know, we read through um, die. section... You almost fell back. I thought so. I just mm-hmm. kept going. It was still it, does. Um, was it... Hey, Roxy. Look. Look up there. Yeah, section 7. There is a lot in section 7. And I would like to read it. 7 and 8 are both bit pretty hefty yeah but i don't feel like i've got all the all the tools right now to unpack it because i didn't study it this week just because i had such a busy week at work and stuff well luckily it's pretty straightforward okay let me start going on seven yeah this is article one section seven all bills for raising revenue (laughs) did you hear that but proxy tooted. It's great. Sorry, the kid, little kid of me, never leaves. I told so. I was telling Ricky. Uh, I was telling my son a, a story, a bedtime story, and I've been telling him this story for the last like month, where every night something new happens, you know. But a few, a few, maybe last week, there was one night where this guy that is going through the story, he got to the top of a tower. He he was on a cloud and he got into the top of the tower, and he. Um, it's it's a great story. You'd love it. But um, I'm not reading any of these words in here. <laughs> he ran into a um, a 
wizard and the wizard there was the slide in the tower and the wizard told him that the slide goes to the bottom of the tower and as i was telling him this i changed like the way i was going with it and i was like yeah the slide went to the bottom of the tower so he got on the slide he wanted to go out of the tower but when he got to the bottom of the tower all he heard was and my son he's three and he was just like he heard he's like <laughs> he just started laughing so hard oh it was so great he realized that it meant bottom like bum instead of bottom like the the ground floor and it was just it was it was really funny it's a really funny moment you would have loved it i'm sorry i'm, I'm sorry don't all apologize. what don't apologize <laughs> all bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments as on other bills. So the House <coughs> writes the bills, comes up with the ideas. Specifically for raising revenue. Yes. The House writes them, and then the Senate has the opportunity to amend or concur other bills, but not those ones that raise revenue. That's the way I understand that. Every, do, you want me, do you want more? Yeah. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall before it become a law be presented to the President of the United States. If he approves, he shall sign it, but if not, he shall return it with his objections to the House in which it shall have originated, who shall enter the objections to lar at large on their journals and proceed to reconsider it if after such a reconsideration two-thirds of the of that house shall agree to pass that pass the bill it shall be sent together with the objections to the ha to the other house by which it shall likewise be reconsidered and if approved by two-thirds of the house it shall become a law but in all such cases the votes of both houses shall be determined by yeas and nays and the names of the persons voting for and against the bill shall be entered on the journal of each house respectively if do you want to pause or i was just gonna say i don't remember what i was gonna say um so as we see they Came up with a bill. Both houses were like, yeah, cool, whatever. And send it to the White House. The president says yes. Or he says no. And he says no because of these reasons. I mean, it kicks it back to the House. They address those objections. Whatever. If they disagree, the, then they have to have two-thirds support. That's why we shouldn't really be too concerned about this election in particular because even if even if they end up with a super majority they're still split too too closely I still I mean I, I still think Trump's going to have a second term like I I guess we'll see I don't know it's, anyway it's um, one of those things that we're not talking presidents right now cool getting but going back to this <laughs> it's interesting how so just to be clear the house or the senate either of them can create a bill that they propose for law they talked about it they vote on it and then they send it over to the president if the president ex, ex, um, says it's okay he can sign it as well or he can send it back um, and then they have the opportunity to um, address those concerns and they vote on it again. If they have a two-thirds majority in the in the House or the Senate, then it goes back over goes back over to the other House. So if it's if it originated in the House, it goes back to the Senate at that point. Otherwise, it goes back to the House at that point. But it's not there's not a clear precedence from one or the other, uh, according to what I've read so far, except for on the case of things that that get revenue. Yeah. But let's also take note of who did not right and just pass the bill exclusively the executive yes the that's yeah that's that's a very good point one of the things that i have hated is in over the last few decades 
we've been seeing these omnibus bills. An omnibus bill is a bill where it's 3,000 pages, 5,000 pages, 10,000 pages. You know damn well they didn't read it all. Yeah, they've only had a few days to read it. And, and then you, 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 you can divide it up into so many different like clerks and say, okay, you read these 10 pages, you read these 10 pages. But not one person has gone through and, and been able to, to read the whole thing from beginning to end. The reason they have such big, big bills is because they're hiding things from the people. Well, and they always attach them to the, def to the defense bills every single time and everybody will sit there and say oh we got it we spent we, so much money on our military and blah 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 the military industrial complex and then you have to step back and say do you know why our spending bills are so huge when it comes to defense because both sides will tack on whatever stupid little bullshit they want because the defense bill has to pass and then you get you basically get something where it's like then you have a representative who can go back to their their constituents and say, "Hey, look, I got this passed. I look, it, 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 <laughs> look at me. It, it, it's it's for those of you who listen. I apologize for the coarseness of this terminology, but it's the best way I can describe. I apologize for nothing. I, I, I it's the best way I can describe this interaction. It's it's literally a circle jerk, of <laughs> of like, okay, we we are look at how good we are. Oh yeah! Look at how good we are. Oh yeah! You know, it's just it's it's people. Do it again. <laughs> God, it's it's so it's so terrible. These people are like, they're they're they're. You see it in schools. You see it in like all over, where basically someone abuses power, and then they use that abuse of power to pat themselves on the back, showing how good they are with power. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. We really need to continue on. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. No. We're, we're both guilty. You more so than I. Yeah. It's... Get him. Get him. <laughs> okay. If <laughs> any bill... <laughs> I probably shouldn't have given that analogy. I... <laughs> dude, I love... Oh, dude. It's happening. Are they doing stuff? It's happening. That's my girl. Yeah, no, she's not going to climb up there. That's too much work. It's really not worth the effort. <laughs> I'd kick your ass if I wasn't so lazy. <laughs> it's my girl. <laughs> if any bill shall not be returned by the president within 10 days, Sunday accepted, after it shall have been presented to him, the same shall be a law, in like manner as if he had signed it unless the Congress, by their adjournment, prevents its return, in which case it shall be, it shall not be a law. What that statement says that if the president steps back and doesn't do his duty, or if the Congress steps back and doesn't do their duty, so if the president steps back and doesn't do his duty in either signing it or rejecting the bill, then it will, it'll be assumed that he approved it. And it's like, okay, we don't need your approval if you're not doing your own duty. On the other case, if the um, Congress, if they adjourn, if they close and don't finish the finish, see it done till the end, then it doesn't become law as well. And so what what it it's it's really beautifully written because it it really kind of tries to or it it it, it, it they they foresee in all of these different ways that people are going to try and cheat the system. It's like well if they have to wait until we come to until we approve their approve or reject, we're just going to do nothing. Oh, if they have to do this, we're just going to do nothing. Ah, oh, you know. And it's like, no, you've got ten days. It's like, no, you if you if you adjourn, and and it gets kicked back to you, and you adjourned, then you you no longer have that. It's it's automatically be uh, dis uh, w not be law. It's in case it, I don't know if veto is the right term, but it's all it's uh, automatically voted down, uh, not written into law. You know, it's amazing. The more that we go through this, the more we understand it. You realize the genius of the of this document. It's divinely thought inspired. Of everything. Yeah. Everything. Though and man hasn't really changed in all of his existence on this earth, but they they thought of literally everything. 
and the more that people try to explain it away like oh what they're saying here they mean blah 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 the only way that they can do that is if you don't understand what it's ri- what's what's set, said in it if you don't know what's you, in it you can't defend it you have to know the precedent under which it was written too that's another thing you have to understand this entire document our our form of government the republic the entire thing was built on compromise for the good of the nation, not compromise for the enslavement of the nation. Well, the compromise is the compromise between men who are fighting for their families. Mm-hmm. It's men who have, they've been, um, they've been subjects to a tyrant. And they're like, okay, we no longer want to accept this, this tyranny. And they're like, okay, I mean, it, that, that tyranny affects people differently. And so they each have different things that they're going to care about. But it's like, okay, when we, when we come together and we, we compromise on what, where, where these values are, mm-hmm. you realize, okay, this is the thing that is actually important. And that's why it's three, four pages. Well, I don't think, and it took them months oh. to, to pen those four pages. And I don't think people realize um, how close we came to not even having it. The, the Constitution. If it hadn't been for George Washington presiding over the Constitutional Convention, it would never happen. They almost didn't even get enough states to ratify the Constitution. And then all of a sudden, they all fell in line. (laughs) Except for Rhode Island. It took them a a hot minute to decide they wanted to do it. Because they're stubborn up there. If you if you had the chance go on to YouTube and look at some of those some of those things. One that I will suggest specifically is put on by George Washington's Mount Vernon YouTube channel. Um, and it's called Washington and the Constitution. Check it out. Learn learn more about not just the document, but how it came to be and just how close it was to almost not being. Every order, resolution, or vote to which the con- um, the concurrence of the Senate and House of Representatives may be necessary, except on a question of adjournment, shall be pres- presented to the President of the United States. And before the same shall take effect, shall be approved by him or being a disapproved by him shall be repassed by two-thirds of the Senate and House of Representatives according to the rules and limitations prescribed in the case of a bill. That's t- the way that I understand that is like, okay, if you call it something else, if you call it an order, if you call it a resolution, if you call it a vote, it doesn't matter what you call it, this is the process that it has to go by. Mm-hmm. This is the genius of the Constitution. Yeah, and it's like you can you can try and wiggle you can try and wiggle around, but this is what it means. Every is a very inclusive term, like it's it, it doesn't leave wiggle room. There is no wiggle room in this document anywhere. Section eight: The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duty, imp posts and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States but all duties imposts and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States do you have anything you want to add to that I'm just thinking about that uniform throughout the United States it trying to trying to it has to be the same mm-hmm. from state to state it's it's uh, they can't say oh so and so punish people you they can't use the the um money to punish those their taxes duties and imposts okay continuing on to borrow money on the credit of the united states to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the indian tribes to establish a and uniform rule of naturalization and inform uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States. To 
to coin <clears throat> the well, sorry the naturalization is um, your immigration your when someone becomes naturalized is when they become a citizen to coin to coin money regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin and fix the standard of weights and measures to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the, the securities and current coin of the United States so those those two things I mean uh, the standard of weights and measures we complain about like if you go into sciences and stuff like that there's always a complaint between standard versus metric and even in like other things just general there's always a complaint with standard versus metric you know if the government wasn't regulating anything it'd be willy-nilly whatever like oh two stones and all you know we'd, we'd have so many different weight and measure systems and stuff and we complain about it from country to country but it's like well everybody else uses the metric system England doesn't. What does England use? They use the standard. England uses the standard? I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't know. I think England and um, Australia both use standard. I could be wrong on that. I don't know. I thought we were the only ones who did standard. I'm pretty, standard I'm pretty sure. Reason. I'm pretty sure standard is a. It's from the English culture. Like. So here's a tidbit of useless information for you. Mm -hmm. So if we go back, well, we're not going back. We're going current. <laughs> um, in the military, we range everything by meters mm -hmm. because that's the NATO standard. So, you know, you have, you go off of meters, kilometers, stuff like that, because like I said, it's the NATO standard. Our, our uh, adjustments for our optics and for our sights and everything are metric adjustments so that's how they work you have you know a hundred meter setting 300 meter setting blah 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 mm -hmm. but if you look at like caliber we're still no oh well yeah calibers are weird you have nine millimeter or 45 acp I, yeah, anyway yeah yeah but uh if you look back at like uh because we're still using 50 caliber machine guns from World War II. Mm -hmm. My, the 50 that I had in Iraq was from World War II. Oh, wow. And the, it was so weird to go from everything else we have is set up on meters to this old ass 50 caliber machine gun that's set up in yards. <laughs> anyway. That's awesome. I'm sorry, I, I saw the dog run. I didn't know to establish Russia. post offices, post offices, and post roads, to promote the progress of science and useful arts, by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries, <laughs> patents, to constitute tribunals inferior for the Supreme Court to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations to declare war grant letters of mark and reprisal and make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise and support armies but no appropriation of money to that you shall be for longer for a longer term than two years to provide and maintain a navy to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the union suppress insurrections and repel invasions well, um, one thing I'm going to interrupt real quick Ooh. Ooh, it's happening they're gonna fight Roxy. Where are they going to play? Roxy. You are a lot smaller, dog. Ooh. Roxy wants to play. Hey. Where did you even come from? 
You bite me, you get shot. <laughs> Roxy. Come here, Roxy. Get Roxy. Sit. Hey. Hey. Oops. Hey, Roxy. Good girl. Sit. Just let him be. <laughs> hey. She just wants to play with him. He wants to. He's terrified of her. She's like doesn't even care. <laughs> um. Anyway, so we're talking about providing for the militaries and the militia. One, one thing I wanted to point out, it was a few um, par uh, section, uh, paragraphs before, or sentences before, but it said, to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for longer term than two, year, than two years. The, the value it has been to not let us make um, to appropriate money for raising armies for more than two years really forces us to revisit it. it you can't just yeah. oh we're gonna have until this conflict's over we're gonna have a blank check and it's like no that's not the way it's meant to be and that's not a good way to go yeah well and also it it says here that the government's supposed to provide for the militia the National Guard is not the militia no no, it's contrary not. to popular belief. I would know. I was in the National Guard. <laughs> it's not the same. Do you want to speak I mean, to that a little more? Ultimately, the National Guard, yeah, it's it's a state organization, but ultimately, it's still a federal resource. I mean, you look at the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and how much they've used the National Guard in those conflicts. Yeah, it belongs to the state, but as soon as the president signs that piece of paper to federalize the guard, they're now a federal asset, no longer a state. To be used against the people. That's why they take National Guard from one state and move it to another state. Mm -hmm. When, and, yeah, in instances of insurrections or whatever, they, yeah. You'll be deployed within your own state for natural disasters, but other than that, you'll get sent somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to have a hard time turning people on their own. Yeah. So that's your family. Yeah, it's your neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, okay. To provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia, and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the discipline prescribed by Congress. Anything you want to it's just uh, the thing that's that's coming to my mind there is um, how the militia, the discipline prescribed by Congress, like authority and training the militia according to the discipline pres prescribed by Congress. That means our, our militias should be receiving support and instruction from Congress, not just like... But they've turned them into the enemy. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, the, the, the idea of a militia is... is They're not going to let me do whatever the hell I want and rule people. Yeah. Yeah, the, the yeah, we all know how so many people view militias, mm -hmm. radicals, they're racists. Some, yeah, I mean you're gonna have bad people mixed in with any group: doctors, lawyers, politicians, governors. Gary Herbert. Don't mix in Gary Herbert with any group. Then every group becomes bad. He's a tyrant. Ow. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square, as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress 
become the seat of the government of the United States and to ex exercise like authority all over over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same sh shall be for the uh, for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful beating buildings. Um, is that is that how they got the federal parks? The consent provided by the states purchase all other lands. I don't know. Because I can see how you can make a case for mm -hmm. that, um, it, it, but I don't know if that's how they went about doing it. It seems like just just thinking of how the the federal but, parks are so well. It's talking in particular about establishing bases, forts. I know, I know. You, it's clear because it's talking about like in dockyards, and it's talking about arsenal do, arsenals, and it's talking about magazine. Um, yeah, and f forts of erection. Or erect, erection of forts. Forts of erection. <laughs> but, um... Giggle. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just makes me think of, like... It, and, yeah, everybody loves going to the national parks and stuff, but it's also... There's something wrong there in my mind. Like, I don't know, and I don't know enough about it to know exactly what. But it feels weird that the national government owns so much of the land of the people. I love the national parks, mm -hmm. and I love that they're protected. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with that. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Where I draw issue is being charged to go there. Why the hell should I have to pay? Well, I don't have to anymore. <laughs> but why, why should the people have to pay to go see something that they already paid for and something that they already taxed own? taxed for. Because if if it's federal land, it belongs to the people. Because we pay for it. We fund it. And to say, well, you have to pay your dues to come see this. The hell I do. I, I already did. You don't own this. If it belongs to the federal government, it belongs to the people. You can make the, the argument. The government doesn't just, poof, make money. They steal it from me. You can make the argument that, like, oh, this is the the entrance fees and stuff like that are used to maintain the roads and they're maintain. You know, I mean, th there is an argument there, but it's also like, that's, it, 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 like you said, it just feels like double dipping. It is. Mm -hmm. Moving on, and to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by the Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or office thereof. So, we've established military funding, four directions, Sorry, I'm I'm still thinking about <laughs> I'm thinking about land. I'm thinking about uh, the federal government and the role of their ownership in land and stuff like that. And it's like, I I I agree that it's good to have those protections on that land. Like I agree because people would destroy it. Yeah, and I and I and we don't want that. And I don't I don't want that either. But also, the the federal government is not an entity that I am inclined to give good faith to. No. And so it's like okay. If they need, if they need, if they need to pay off debts to China, if they need, you know, are they going to sell those federal? Yeah, does lands? Yellowstone now belong to China? Exactly. Like, is that is that something that we have to worry about? Because it's in the hands of the federal government. Yes, it is. You know well, what I mean? Just like the Gonzalez flag, come and take it. The Gonzalez flag? The come and take it flag. It was in Gonzales, Texas in 1835? Tell me something that I don't know about this, because I don't know. What so Gonzales is, was a town in Texas, mm -hmm. and they had a cannon to keep the, the colony safe, and the Mexican army, General Santa Ana, sent the army to take the cannon away, mm -hmm. and the people said, no, we're going to keep it. 
to protect the colony. Mm-hmm. And the Mexican army tried to take it away from them. And then they ultimately had to leave. So when you see the picture of the cannon with the star over it that says, come and take it, that's where that comes from. Hmm. I did not know that story. I is, I is smirt. Oh, damn, he's back. He's stupid. I think he's hungry. I don't have food. Get. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think of any of it. All I know is I, um, I, I, I don't know if like is the right word. I agree with them, um, having, having the national parks and protecting them and stuff because if they didn't, Somebody would claim it, and then yeah, and then the, and then you would wouldn't, lose it. You'd lose it. You yeah. wouldn't be able to experience it and enjoy it. Um, people would destroy it, ultimately. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I can I can see the reason. I'm okay with it. Um, I do think that it should be private, more privatized. If you're gonna collect fees and stuff, because then you can manage it better. But then you sit there and they say, "Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have a shutdown because we're not getting our way. We're throwing a fit. People can't go to the national parks. They can't go to the national monuments. They can't it, do it, this and that." It's like, who the hell do you think you are? I paid for that. I can go see it whenever I damn well please. I mean, you do the same thing with your kids. There are some toys you give your kids for the express purpose of being able to take away if they're not good. It's like. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like uh, you you don't get this privilege anymore, and they they go to want the privilege, and so they behave the way that you're you're teaching them to behave. And it's like, but the problem is we're not kids. I mean, I think a lot of us are going to, you know, when the government shuts down, it's like okay, whatever. I don't care because you're not going to be spending money, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but when they can't get along and they can't agree on something because of petty political differences they take it out on the citizens on the citizens because I assume that most people don't (coughs) write their representatives about about spending bills so it's entirely partisan it's the two parties fighting over okay well I guess we'll just shut down and and the entire country is going to have to deal with this we're going to punish the kids because mom and dad don't get along in essence not that the government's mom and dad that's what the so um that's what the the whole tea party movement was about was being more fiscally responsible i thought it was a racist movement you did yeah you were watching news at the time then (sighs) they're racist they don't like the establishment so they're racist damn it no man i don't have a good argument so I'm just gonna say it's racist. If you get your, if you, if you feel that you are informed because you watch any of the cable news networks or local news networks, then you are, um, you are, li- uh, what's the right, uh, uh, willfully misinformed. Like Denzel Washington said it in an interview where I, I don't like to appeal to. Uh, actors and stuff like that but he made a great point when he's like if you don't watch the if you don't watch the news you're not informed if you watch the news you're You're misinformed misinformed. yeah and it's like that's the truth i like denzel washington i don't know much about him on a personal level that one clip that i saw of his made me like okay i i appreciate that he's not just i also like gary sinise gary sinise yeah lieutenant dan See the guy that uh, gets his legs blown off? Yeah, yeah. That's why I always send people Lieutenant Dan means. <laughs> Nothing but a worthless damn cripple. <laughs> so, Lieutenant Dan has got to be one of my most favorite movie characters of all time. Forrest Gump's the show where um, a girl gets a, a retarded kid. Um, He's not retarded. 
he, she gives him AIDS, right? And then she's the good person. That's that show. Yes. Well, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love Force. I love that movie. <laughs> Lieutenant Dad, what are you doing here? Well, thought I'd try out my sea legs. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> I, I've, I've only seen the show once. I haven't seen oh it Oh my much. gosh, man, you're missing out. Forrest Gump has got to be one of the greatest movies ever made. Even though Tom Hanks is kind of a douchebag. The end. I don't know. I don't really have anything else to talk about other than watching a fire. One of the things, and I've and I've said it before, uh, but we really we are affected heavily by the way that we consume media, and so be very deliberate with what you what you watch or what you consume. The news that you receive, even there's there's a I did watch this show. It's called um, it's on. I think it's on Netflix. I don't have Netflix. I have some guy that I work with sent me a link to it, and he's like, I don't know how illegal this is to, but you can watch it if you want. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But um, uh, I'm not sure what was the, the show? The show particular legalities. It's 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 basically like one of those documentary type shows, but they make it into a movie as well. Big Hero Six. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> no, oh, it's um, we run out of Star Wars. It was. The, the social dilemma that's what it was the social dilemma but it goes through and talks about how like the mandalorian basically with google the 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 not just google the all of the media companies you think of what their actual um product is and it's attention they're they're seeking to get your attention they want that's that's the purchase price is your attention and so they try to do whatever they can they tailor results they tailor um they tailor the news feeds or the your Facebook feeds or your Twitter feeds. Everything's tailored to get your attention. And so regardless of which, regardless of whether the information you're getting is right or wrong, it's all tailored to get you to be interactive with that platform and share that platform. And it's it's really is, um, you, it, it's easy to think yourself more informed or less informed or, uh, you know, it's easy to, to justify why your line of thinking is correct but a lot of the j just understanding that the media itself and and i and i'm referring to social media as well in this it, it's the whole purpose is to get you to pay attention and whatever achieves that ends is a win for them and it's like the only way that you can fight that system the only way you can fight that is just to not consent not to don't 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 play the game it's like Okay, who's who's the most informed about the what's going on at the election? Who's the most informed about what's going on with the Kardashians? Who's the most informed about what's going on with your favorite sports team or you know whatever it is that you like personally? Guns. Who, who's what's what who's the most informed about what's going on with the Second Amendment and with guns? You know, that's that's good stuff to know, but realize that your your life is in your own hands. Like you, it doesn't your the, being informed is great, and it's important. But it doesn't make your in time with your kids better. It doesn't make your time with your your family better. Like it, you gotta you gotta live life for the the things that matter as well, you know. And so I don't know. There's there's always this balance that you have to it's, that you have to play. Where it's like we need to stay informed. We need to stay understanding so that we can protect the 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 future of our kids. We so that we can keep them in a in a place that they're going to be great but don't sacrifice those little moments with your kids to do that you know don't sacrifice the camping with your kids with your family don't sacrifice the the working hard and learning how to teach your kids how to work or how to take care of a, a garden or take care of trees or take care of your your chickens or whatever or, you know don't don't sacrifice the things that are really important in the in in your life for potentials of what could be very important, um, ultimately. 
I love camping. I love trees. I think I think we all need to try and spend more time outside with our children. Teach our children to appreciate nature more. Um, I mean, we're, I, we don't have fur, so I mean, it's a stretch to say that, that we're meant to be outside. Well. But we are. We're meant to be outside. We're not meant to. I don't know how I'm trying to say it. <laughs> Without fur, there's there's actually some really good benefits to us, as well. And like, it's it, it's it wouldn't be as intuitive, but there's this one one YouTube channel that I enjoy where they he basically talks about different animals and species and he treats them like games. And it's like, well, if you spec into this tree, you know, <laughs> this evolution tree, it's like you get this ability. And then he, <laughs> and he goes in and he's like, it, it's really interesting, but. Our, our bodies are fascinating the way that we take in sunlight and, and mm -hmm. get vitamin D the way that we um, the way that we sweat and we the way produce that produce electricity yeah <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> um, no so we, we all need to spend more time outside and I mean I spend quite a bit of time outside when I'm not at work as it is but I need to be better about it during the summer the peak of summer <laughs> Because you hate the sun. I hate, I hate the sun, and I hate the hot, and I hate the smoke right now. <laughs> See how nice it is when it blows in somebody else's face? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it really isn't that bad um, when it's blowing you know, in your face. Have the fires with your kids. Go camping. I mean, I realize camping is not everybody's cup of tea, and it's hard the first couple of times you do it. But when you figure out how to do it, and you have the stuff that you need and you know how to use it camping is the greatest thing ever you're out in the woods just camping in the desert bullshit <laughs> um, but you're in the woods you're with your kids it's quiet it's beautiful there's there's the squirrels and the chipmunks and the occasional bear that wanders through your campground. I'm really selling this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really it gives you a chance to to experience and to appreciate the the world God gave us. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's there's something spiritual about getting back in in line with with this this earth. Yes, and it doesn't have to be like a churchy thing. It doesn't have to be a hippie thing. Like, let's go find mushrooms either. I know where to find some mushrooms. I don't think they're the right kind, though, but I don't really know how to tell. I don't know much about <laughs> Experimentation is the only solution. <laughs> <laughs> don't look it up. Just experiment. <laughs> yeah. Spend more time outside with your kids. It's an amazing world. It's an amazing world, and we all deserve to see more of it. And if, if that's one of those things that you don't foster with your children, they probably won't foster it on their own. And so they'll miss out on it. Your posterity will miss out on it. It's not hot enough. But, I mean, it may, outside is amazing. I love being outside. I'm... Even if I don't have anything to do outside, a lot of times I'll just go take my trusty chair and I'll go sit under the tree and read or probably not going to sit in the shade today. Kind of nippy, but right now with be outside right now with the the whole pandemic, coronavirus, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of of people suffering uh, mentally. There's a lot of like mental health stuff that people are dealing with that it's pain, it, it's it's trauma. It's traumatizing for people who um, who don't have some of the, I mean, for, for, it, it can be for anybody. But the thing that we don't realize is one of the, one of the best um, helps in things like depression and things like 
um, anxiety and stuff, one of the best helps is being outside planting a garden, getting your feet in the dirt and, and working in the dirt. There's, there's so many different levels of, of help that it provides. It provides investing yourself in something that is not immediate. Our, so much of our life is full of immediate gratification. The immediate, oh, look it up, and you know the answer to something on YouTube or to in, on Google or whatever. You can, find, you can find what somebody has said the answer to any question is. I have an entire set of en encyclopedias at my house. Do you know how to use them? Mm-hmm. Good. That's the thing is like we... But the problem is they don't, they don't publish the volumes of encyclopedias anymore. Mm -hmm. At least I don't believe so. So I don't know how old mine is. And we're always figuring out new things but yeah um my wife's grandma or mom whoever was gonna throw them away and they're like no let us take them and part of the reason that i wanted to take them was if anything like if society collapsed or something like that we still have those tools that we could continue to teach our children um stuff but anyway that's I just realized your hands probably monkeying up, rubbing on your mic the whole time. I don't think so. My hands have been—I've been like this most of the time. If so, I'm sorry. No, I don't. I don't mind. I wasn't apologizing to you. I don't have to. I don't owe you anything. That's right. You owe me. You're welcome for my service. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, you'd have to see all the... Yeah. It's an inside thing. People don't really get it. <laughs> get what? Normal civilians don't typically... I will punch you in your face! <laughs> I will beat you like the red-headed stepchild you should have been. <laughs> uh. If you're a red-headed stepchild... I'm not apologizing. <laughs> I saw a red-headed Arab once. Really? Yep. Red hair, green eyes. It's like, man, how low on the totem pole do you have to be to be a red-headed Arab? <laughs> did you get to know him? Or did you just oh, see him? Oh, I just saw him. <laughs> I drove by him like, what the hell? As we keep driving by, and I'm like leaning on the turret, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Hey, what do you see? What do you see? It's right out of the way. No shit. I hit the brakes. <laughs> Stop the convoy. <laughs> People may not appreciate that. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't give a damn. People will think that you're a terrible person. That's fine. You're not entirely wrong. It's <laughs> uh, great. Here's the thing, though. We we get so caught up with what we're told to care about. We're told to care about, oh, you can't say these words, you can't do these things, or you can't have these opinions. You can't joke about stuff like that because it's cruel and insensitive. But because the the whole this whole line of thinking of oh that's cruel and insensitive oh that's this uh, finding excuses why people can't act these ways, what it does is it finds excuses why we shouldn't get to know people. It puts up barriers between us, and it creates it it creates um, walls between us. And so when when someone goes off on some fringe uh, racist ideology, it's because they don't actually know another person who is in a different experience than them and they don't they 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 haven't been able to get to know people the because we've been putting up these walls these walls of oh you can't make fun of that oh you can't do that you can't say well, that and also it's not okay to talk and ask about it oh yeah that's the that's a microaggression asking where someone's from because you hear an accent that's a microaggression so freaking stupid so stupid if you don't know what a microaggression is it's a way that they say when you do it's something made up it's not real well it's it's a way that people say when you do something it harms other people in a micro way which means in a very little way and what that's what it what it paves the ground for is saying that 
you in being curious or you in doing something that is everybody knows is fine just asking a question or saying an opinion or something like that if you say to people oh you speak really well you 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 your english is very good that can be that's that's considered a microaggression because you don't know how many times they've had people say that to them and all of a sudden you being polite and you being kind has turned into you being a, a, a the racism. aggressor and it also means that you it, it it's the precursor to saying you have assaulted them which assault it, I've, I've really heard these arguments made where it's like you're assaulting others and it's like Oh, I'm assaulting others because I was considerate. It's like no, you, you're. This whole ideology is focused around getting us to not understand or, or know people that are different than us. It's 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 meant to build walls so that mm -hmm. we can have so it can give the people that it's controlling the moral high ground in attacking. It's like oh, and that's like it's it's a it's a house of cards. It looks, it's a facade. It looks like, oh, it lo there looks like there's something there. But if you actually touch it or, or probe it a little bit, it all falls apart. It is. I don't understand the new societal rules. I don't really care to. <laughs> but to just talk to people, to ask somebody who's different, just to ask them questions and, you know, try to gain more understanding is somehow not the way to solve the problem <laughs> and one of the interesting <laughs> things is you um the the whole concept is perpetrated not by the people who it's proposed to protect most of the people some most people when they come to a different country when they come to the states from a different country and english is not their first language if they're in college or stuff like that not if not if they're in college. If they're in college, there's a, a decent chance that they've been indoctrinated to think this way. But most people appreciate you telling them, "Hey, your English is great." Like I'm, you, you're, you know, they because they're trying very hard to not have an accent. They're trying very hard to be understood. And, and wow, you put a hole right through that. I did. Look at me go, man. Touch it. No. Touch it with your tongue. <laughs> your tongue. The liquid on your tongue will make it cold, oh. so it won't burn you. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a lie. laughs> oh man we should give life advice we could be life coaches you know it's sad that me and you can give advice to people that will improve their lives <laughs> yeah but it's true <laughs> I want people to be free <clears throat> and I want people to follow God. They go hand in hand. If you have one, you have the other. Hmm. Not comp not not always. There are plenty of people who, um, in the name of their freedom, they choose poorly. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where I'm it's like of that. what we all are. I mean, I, I say plenty of people, but really, when it comes down to it, everyone is. And it's like freedom is the precursor to following God. Because if you if you can't choose for yourself, you can't follow. You know, and freedom is like I I don't know. I, I'm not trying to give a precedence or an importance level or anything like that. It's just the the way I currently think. I think that a lot of the problems we have as a as a country and as a society are because we don't listen to God. We've you turned our back on him. We've turned our back on him. You get people who they they hate the idea that there is there is the concept of God in our politics. You get people who hate the idea that there's the concept of God and they they they're they're not necessarily wanting people to not believe in God, but they don't want God to be part of the discussion in in a public way they, they would rather hide God's face because and I don't I don't know the answer to why but it's 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 sad to see because it's like we have this clear separation of, of church and state but one of the truths is we as people we need to worship 
we need to worship something. And when people don't worship God, they worship science. And they claim science to be their God. And they don't, they use different names for it. They use, oh, studies. And they use, oh, this and these and this. And it's like, there's really, there's, there's beautiful things in science and beautiful truths in science. And I, I love science, but I hate the fact that people have taken science and replaced God with science without understanding where science came from and without understanding that when you ha- when you have faith in anything faith is is faith it's built off of an imperfect knowledge of things and so to say i i believe science or you know it's like so it's no any no different to you than god it is your god and it's it's a false god Pew. Hmm? Somebody's going to go pew. Oh, oh, oh. What time is it? 11. Okay, we better get wrap this up, I think. Hmm. Well, it only takes you a half hour to get home. 45 minutes. Yeah, but we BS for a while after. Yeah. I don't want to let those logs burn down. I like BSing with you. I don't know why. I do. Oh. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> that makes that makes one of us who knows why we enjoy talking to each other. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hurtful. <laughs> Hurtful things. <laughs> um, what do you think that... Uh, if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to see us do differently or talk about, you know... I don't, I don't really intend on, like, we could do, like, funny skits. We could do stuff to make this interesting and entertaining. But I don't think either me or you are here to be seen and entertained or entertaining to others. Like, it's, it's, it, it, we hope that you enjoy what you're getting. I could get a gladius and throw it at the camera and say, are you not entertained? What's a gladius? Gladiator sword. The Roman sword. In the empire have you never no. is, it, is it a short sword yeah romans had the short sword with the yeah gladius. i didn't know that was called the gladius i've seen I'm pretty sure it's called the gladius. It, <laughs> I, I, I would I like to be say, wrong i would like to say it probably it is comes, it comes from part of me doesn't want to give you that satisfaction <laughs> Um, what I was speaking of comes from the movie uh, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Nah, he kills show. all those people. And then in, he gets Are you all, not entertained? And, and, yeah, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, this guy's brutal. Some Whatever. And he freaking throws a sword up at the, the, <laughs> king. the governor. Or, or whatever. whatever the season. It's before he made it to Rome. Says, Are you not entertained? So that's what I was talking about. That's neither here nor there. Ah, it's great. Of course it is. Um... Such a yeah, good if you have anything you want us to talk about or uh, explain, you can message the Facebook page. You set up a website too, yeah, uh, or an email it's, or something. It's ugly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so are we. It's not. It's it's nothing impressive. Neither are we. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, look at us. <laughs> um. But yeah, we'd be more than happy to talk about things that other people want to talk about. Um, Someday we might have guests. We were going to a while ago, and then it just fell apart. I've talked to a couple people. If you're interested in being a guest, let us know. Yes, write us an email or message a page, and and we will promptly ignore you. Well, we'll we'll, we'll probably ignore (laughs) you for a good week or two before we actually realize there's an email. I, I check that email probably once a week or so. But it's on my phone, so I think I would get an alert. I don't get hardly any emails from it. Yeah, it's because we don't really have much of a following. <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine with that. I wish that more people could hear what we're talking about just because like i said like we said before we feel like what we're talking about is important um but if 
if you're listening on YouTube and you're interested in helping out, this is something that you could do that would be very helpful. If you put comments to topics that you feel like we, we said something important, because most of this is just us, but every now and then the things that we say are, we do feel passionately about and we feel like there are important messages to get. And comments like those help me. I'm, I'm the one that edits all this stuff and, and they help that me to know. Work. I'm just no, okay. I'll I'll um, cut those out, those those clips out and put them into something a little bit more um, consumable by someone who's not wanting to listen to two hours of just two crazy guys rambling. <laughs> two desperately insane adults. Two, two clinically <laughs> clinically retarded individuals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that word's offensive. <laughs> to who? I don't know. I don't know. But that's what I've heard. People are like, that word's offensive. It's a word. If your feelings are hurt by a word, then you're weak. How can you say that to me? Don't you know I have feelings? Yeah, we talked about this. That's what I was talking about. You're weak. You're weak. Like, <laughs> you... You are so weak that you are hurt by words. <laughs> mm. you're, baby. I mean, you're a baby. Getting, being offended is a conscious choice that you make. That's something I don't want to hear. And then saying I'm offended is basically saying I'm not willing to better myself. Do you know what happens? Stronger. Do you know what happens when you get offended? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happens. Like, you're offended. Is the world any better because your feelings are hurt? Is it any worse? <laughs> the only thing, the only place that is affected is between your two ears. Yeah. And ultimately, nobody cares. You don't have a right to not have your feelings hurt. I mean, we care you that you... You make the choice to not be offended. And if you get offended, I'm responsible for what comes out of my mouth. You're responsible for how you deal with it. It's it's far more damaging to people to for them to be think that they are unable to handle something than it is for them to handle something that's hard. Because when you when you're told and you're taught that people can't you can't do something, it's like well, I'm 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 incapable of of withstanding such a offense. It's like no, you're tougher than that. You're better than that. You have that you have that power. You have that that ability inside you, you know? Inside of you. This little old light of mine in your guts. No. I'm going to let it shine. No. Keep it inside. Please, 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 please keep it inside. inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope that. No, go ahead. I hope that um, me. the only people that like, I hope that this is more interesting to people who are working and they don't have anything else to listen to, and it's just an entertaining thing. That's the thing that I think is the when I go when I have to do work with my hands and stuff like that, and I have to do work that actually you, a lot of physical labor doesn't require you to think that in in depth once you've kind of gotten into the groove of things and throwing on something like this is, is what I, I find joy in preparedness tip for the week get seeds heirloom seeds and learn how to grow a garden not now it'll die but you just told me to grow a garden. I planted in oh, this is December. Not growing. <laughs> but yeah, get, if you get seeds, then they you can throw them in your food storage. They're cheap, cheap as crap. Um, but learn how to grow a garden. The heirloom seed, seeds you can harvest those seeds and regrow off them the next year. So. That's all I've got. We have nothing else of value to say. 
wouldn't have anything of value to say to be with. The most valuable is reading the Constitution. Yeah, that's all we got going for us. But those aren't our words. <laughs> <laughs> thanks yeah. thanks for, for joining this week. Episode 12. 12. The Empire Strikes Back. No, that's episode <laughs> 7. You're stupid. Ah. Until next time. Until next time. I'm sorry you had to be part of this. Booyah. I have one more piece of wood that I... Turn it on, you're ready. It's recording. Right now? Yep. Oh. You. Right there, watching. Share this video. Share it with your friends.